Choosing the joint type that best represents the desired motion in an assembly is one of the most important aspects of assembly modeling. This will enable the model to mimic realistic mechanical motion. In this exercise, I'll create an assembly using the five components shown here and go over why some joint types might be more appropriate for certain situations than others. As with any assembly in Fusion 360, it's important to first ground one of the components so that the other components can move relative to it. In this example, I'll ground the wider bracket. I'll right-click on it in the browser and select Ground. With the bracket grounded, I first want to center the rod within the holes of the wide bracket. I'll activate the Joint command and then select the center of the rod and the joint origin that was manually added between the tabs of the bracket. With the two components positioned properly, I can define what kind of motion is intended for these two components. Identifying how the components come into contact helps determine how to define its motion. I can see that the rod touches the inner cylindrical faces on the tabs, indicating that a real-life model would keep the rod from translating in the X or Y directions or rotating about those same axes. That means there are two degrees of freedom left, translating and rotating about the Z axis. This means that the cylindrical joint type would best capture the real-world relation between two parts, which allows for translation and rotation about a single axis. For this example, however, the rod is a placeholder component that doesn't need to slide through the holes, so I'll use a simple revolute joint that just allows for rotation. I'll click OK to add the revolute joint and move on to connect the small bracket and the rod. I'll reactivate the joint command. I'll select the joint origin that was manually added between the tabs of the small bracket. And I'll select the center snap point of the rod. To make sure that I select the rod and not the custom joint origin of the wide bracket, I'll first hover over the rod, then hold the control key to keep the face selected, or the command key on a Mac. For this joint, there are a few different types that could be used to represent real-world conditions. The rigid joint type could be used if the brackets were welded or glued together. The revolute joint type could be used if the brackets were bound to the center of the rod. And the slider joint could be used if the brackets were on tracks and their faces needed to remain parallel. Because the components come into contact with the rod centered in between the tabs on the smaller bracket, both translation and rotation about the X and Y axes are restricted. This means that the joint type with the best representation is the cylindrical joint type, allowing for translation and rotation about the Z axis. It allows the small bracket to both spin around the rod and slide along its length, which is how the parts would function in the real world. I'll click OK to add this joint to the assembly. And since I have the wide bracket grounded, I can move the small bracket around and along the rod. This is the expected motion for the assembly, confirming that the cylindrical joint was the correct type for these two components. Now, I want to add the two spacers on either side of the small bracket along the rod. In the real world, these spacers would be able to rotate around the rod and would touch the two faces on each tab of the brackets. This means that the joint can be applied to the center of one end of the spacer and the center of the hole of the tab on the wide bracket. If I try to just hover over this point directly, however, the rod is selected instead of the tab. To select the correct joint origin, I need to hover over the face of the tab and hold down the control key to keep it as the reference for the joint location. Now, I can easily choose the correct joint origin. The most realistic joint type would be the cylindrical joint allowing for rotation and translation along the axis of the rod.
I know, however, because of spacing, that both spacers won't be able to slide along the rod between the two tabs of the brackets, but will still be able to rotate. To mimic this behavior, I'll set the joint type to Revolute and hit OK. I'll move ahead to have the other spacer added on the other side of the smaller bracket, which also uses a Revolute joint type. All the components are now connected using joints, and I can check their mechanical motion by dragging them around. Notice that now, that the spacers are in their proper place, but the small bracket overlaps with the spacers since it can translate along the rod. Since these spacers are designed to keep the small bracket centered on the rod, I want to update the bracket's joint type. I'll find the correct joint in the timeline, which I added three joints ago, right-click on it, and select Edit Joint. Because Fusion 360 simply allows for the degrees of freedom to be changed by selecting a new joint type, all I have to do is select Revolute to keep it from sliding, and click OK. Now, all of these components have predictable and realistic mechanical motion.